Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sammy, the Spanish God, and you, yes, you are wrestling to A to the K Wrestle Talk, which you can go subscribe on the YouTube channel. You can go to their Spotify, etc., or listen to the podcast. Make sure you to subscribe, enjoy. I mean, let's be honest, they just got a shout out from me, so they must be somewhat decent. I know they're somewhat smart because they could have got a shout out from someone else like like uh, like Marco Stunt, but instead they got it from me, and I am a god, a Spanish god. So these guys are awesome in my book so far. I've actually never listened to them, but maybe I'll go check them out soon. Maybe. I'm trying to clean my place right now, but regardless, this is a bunch of useless information. Why am I telling you that? Regardless, make sure to subscribe, and uh, please put this entire shout-out in, because I would love to hear where I'm talking about cleaning my place. All right, so that, that's NXT, Carl. I don't know if you want to um, light it up like it's Dynamite. <laughs> hey, um, so yeah, moving on to Dynamite. So, um, as they've done for a couple of weeks now, they kick off the show with a, another video package. This time it was recapping the semi-finals of last week um, and obviously the the trials and tribulations of, of Cody where you know he you might argue he sacrificed Brandy in order to get his win and you know he didn't really throw the towel in for Dustin so quite a few question marks up in the air at the minute around Cody so there was just a little reminder of that um, mm-hmm. ahead of the first match of the night which was uh, Cody taking on Joey Janela um, <laughs> you know I, I'll say this every week and I, I don't I don't get tired of saying it because I do really like appreciate it. I think it's really good, but they just they do they just do stuff that makes sense. It's like if you've got a question or like a wonderment of like, oh well, why the fuck would Cody be fighting Joey Janela this week when he's gonna you know prepare for Lance Archer? The answer it for you. Like commentators were basically saying, you know, why would he take a match when he's got Archer? Well, you know, Cody said the only way to stay sharp and you know to get better is to wrestle. And knowing that Lance Archer's coming up, he wants to be on top of his game. It's like, well, oh yeah, duh, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? It's just stuff. They just they don't make you feel dumb or stupid. And like, if, yeah. you know, if you do you do kind of got questions around the booking or the decisions, then most of the time they'll already answer it for you. So. I don't know stuff like that. It's it's dead, it's dead small and minor, and it's you know probably sounds quite AEW fanboy of me, but I just is, it's not day for me. I um people always try and pigeonhole them. They always try and say, well, you know, oh, you're just an AEW fanboy or whichever. The fact of the matter is, we like both. We'll always have a love oh, yeah. for for WWE. You know, we'll always watch WrestleMania if nothing else. We'll always watch the Rumble if nothing else. But um, you know the. You, you've got to acknowledge when AEW are doing stuff right, and they're, they're both good shows. And this is I've always want. This is what I was saying when AEW were, were thrown into this, and they kept trying to like they still try and coin the Wednesday night wars. It's it's nowhere near what, it, what the Monday night wars were. But yeah, competition. That's exactly what I want. I want WWE to be scared. I want them to to up the game. I want them to improve because AEW are doing something right, and this is definitely. AEW doing something right, and it's only fair to acknowledge it, Carl. I don't think that's a fanboy thing at all. Yeah, and I think um, it was interesting as well this week because they moved back to being a live show. Um, obviously, the the rest of the stuff, which um, I think it was like the last four weeks or so of of TV, was was tapings from um, you know a, a while yeah, I ago. They, which... they covered most of um, most of the, or most of the way into May or something, didn't they? Of yeah, where, from wherever I mean... they were into May. Um, so this is sort of the end of the tapings, is it? Yeah, so I mean, apparently Tony Khan, like bulk, wrote those shows like himself. Um, he obviously had input from like Jericho and Mahardy on their segments and stuff like that, but um, he kind of wrote like four weeks of television, which is probably why it felt so consistent and like planned out. So yeah. there was a little bit he's of obviously a... got a talent for it. For a man who's not really known for being in the wrestling industry, that means he's pretty much put the T T and T tournament and that together story wise, um, <laughs> and. Yeah, fair play to him. I, I've been enjoying the last few weeks. I can't can't deny that. Do you know what I mean? So he's obviously doing a good job. Yeah, and I think um, you know th- this was the first time in a while that they've been live, and I think uh, you know it it was a uh, it was definitely um, you know it felt like they hadn't like missed a beat if that makes sense. You know, considering how good it was previously, like uh, even the start of the show. Uh, you know, Cody. He's, I've I've said this before. You know, he very rarely has a bad match. Mm. Um, this one was like no difference. There was no, like no exception. It was, uh, you know, against a guy in Joey Janela who isn't really that well known. And like as a singles competitor, you would never really go, God, this guy's like put on a wrestling clinic or anything like that. But the match itself was really good. I think Cody does really well to get the best out of everyone he's in the ring with. Um, this one was no different. It was a really, really strong kind of opening to the show. Um, I will say that's one thing I do really like about Cody is that he's he's not just he's not just had a good match. <laughs> 
he's like Joey Janela. We know the name. We know he's in AEW, but this has been a good showcase for Joey. Like you get to see what he's capable of. Even if he doesn't get the win, you get to see what he's capable of. And I think you're totally right that Cody gets the best out of the people he's in the ring with as well. Yeah, and I think again, this this was no exception. It was a really good way to start the show. I don't think anyone expected Cody to lose this match, especially you know trying to keep the momentum up ahead of the TNT title tournament. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well. You know, um, really good match. Cody picks up the win. Just just a nice nice start to the show. Um, following on from that, we had Nyla Rose come out. Um, you know, this week she was uh, taking on Kenzie Page. So, 18-year-old making a debut. And to be fair, you know, considering she's only 18, um, put on a pretty decent show, to be fair. You know, it was a squash match for Nyla. Again, you'd expect no difference. But, um, you know, apparently she'd been wrestling since she was 14. Um, Kenzie Page and you know wow that's a long time <laughs> exactly um, so, <laughs> uh, you know so she's only 18 now and you know I thought she put in a really good show for a debut so you know it was you know she made short work of her Nyla but it was a pretty solid match that achieved everything it needed to to be fair yeah no I, I totally agree um, not to steal from your notes mate but it's one thing I wanted to make a note on because I, I, you don't get to see it all too often and uh, I know I noticed you put down about the, the lifting the shoulders thing mm. and um, I've not seen that in ages I kind of miss that kind of antics where you're just clearly a bastard you know what I mean <laughs> um, well, it's, it's like it's really good heel work isn't it like literally where you've got someone finished but you know you're not finished with them and it's stuff that as you've said you just don't get to see it often and it's stuff like this I feel like every week they do some sort of like call back to an old school you know era or like you know something from from back in the day even like old territory styles you know wrestling and you know it's, it's nice to see but like that as an example without moaning too much but as an example like that kind of antic right put that on Seamus when he's been squashing people these people that we've never heard of where he's not just squashing them but he's fucking toying with them and then it gives Jeff a bit more reason to be annoyed with him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It just adds something to it. Whereas uh, Seamus is just an angry, shouty weirdo who pins people very quickly. <laughs> like to me, those sort of antics that that's how you push a heel. That that's a heel thing to do. Um, I don't. Know, I just I, I miss that. You don't see that all too often. Good no. job, Nyla. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It's like um, you know, I don't want to make the the comparison due to like size or anything like that. But you've got like Nyla and you've got like Nia Jax and. I don't know, in terms of heel work, you know, Niall is definitely doing a, a much better job at the minute, I would say. Um, yeah. So and they, 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 they're good. both in that category of that, that monster stature, you know, that, that mm. monster woman sort of thing. Um, so I think it's a fair comparison to make, really. Um, but in terms of heel work, yeah, she's definitely doing a better job. That's how you do it. Yeah. So for me, um, short match, squash match, but good match. Um, then we had a promo from MJF, uh, phenomenal as always. Oh yeah, uh, so yeah. So he's basically saying that you know what it was. It was a different kind of promo for me. Um, this because normally he's just he leans heavily into the comedy, but I don't know. I feel like this was a m- bit more of like him kind of leg- legitimizing himself as you know he might be a funny kind of comedy kind of gimmick, but at the same time you know he is going places and he is you know does have the potential and you know he's basically saying everyone's kind of saying to him you know he's the next big thing and um you know and apparently everyone's the next big thing even when people are in late late into their 30s but you know he's already the the big thing today and he's only 24 years old you know people saying he's no rick flair he's no rock he's no roddy piper but those people are insecure you know but they're not wrong because he isn't any of them he's mjf and you know, it's better than us, and <laughs> you know. Do you know, I'll have to say though, like, yeah, I, I, I know he's the heel, but I was with him. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you are only 24. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. It's mad, and, really, and they're because... not the next big thing. You are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just, um, he's just got like this really uncan, like, fantastic way and like candor about him, where you know, what I mean, he, he just he, he sucks you in, doesn't he? And you're just like, this guy's so good, you know. You forget that he is only 24 most of the time because he's so thing, yeah. like seasoned in terms of his kind of promo and his gimmick and stuff like that. You know, to think of someone having it down at that age, you know, like fair play, like he is going to go places. I noticed um, in the last few weeks you've um, you've you've given me the the terminology of X pack heat, which I love. I love that as a as a <laughs> phrase. Do we have a polar opposite of that? Someone that you fucking love to hate. Like um, maybe maybe it's, maybe it's MJF heat. Yeah, because this guy is awesome as a heel. 
he's a fantastic heel, but I, I love him for, for doing that. Do you know what I mean? Where is it's, yeah. it's, it's the exact opposite of X Pac heat. He's getting the right kind of heat, and uh, yeah, we'll call it MJF heat because he's he's pushing himself as a heel. That was like it was a a bold promo um, with some arrogant statements in there, but done in the right fucking way. So I'm still like, this guy's awesome. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just think he's 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 just he's got something, hasn't he? You know, every, oh, yeah. every time he's every time he's on, he's doing his a. Uh, his shtick, it's it's always, you know, you're always left entertained. You always kind of think, what a prick. But like, as you've said, in a good way, like, you know what I mean? You're not like, oh, this guy, get him off my TV screen because I don't want to listen to him anymore. You're just, you're captivated and, and you love to hate him. And, you know, that that is MJF. You've, you've heard, of, heard of here first. Damn right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, he's uh, apparently going to be back in action next week, um, we find out. So that, that that's, a, that's a good one. Nice to know he's fully recovered. Well, you know, it was nearly career-ending, um, all know, his and, injuries. Uh, I think it's important to notice that he, he recovered faster than most. Well, that's it. Apparently, he actually over overhealed, which, it's insane. you know, yeah. It's just a the kind of specimen of a, specimen of a man he is. That's you. it, you know. Yeah. It's just levels, absolute <laughs> levels. Um, and then after that, uh, we got a promo package from Sean Spears. Um, basically, a bit of a weird one, this, to be fair. I wasn't really sure what it tried to achieve, but... Um, he basically was was recapping last week, um, saying you know Dustin Rhodes' career is over. Um, nobody comes back from the beating that he took from Lance Archer, but basically says you know he's got brothers and you know if he kind of did that to did what Cody did to you know Dustin as he would have done that to one of his brothers, he you know he'd be never looking himself again, blah blah blah. So just kind of really bringing up the fact that Cody didn't really handle things in the best way. So I'm not really sure where they're going with it, but it seemed yeah. a bit weird yeah be intrigued to see where they go with it yeah i don't know because like obviously he's bitter because he he went out in the quarterfinals to cody but are they gonna do something off the back of it you know cody's already busy with lunch now uh lunch with lance Lunch now so <laughs> yeah um so i don't know strange but mm. let's see if anything comes from it yeah um we then cut back to ringside where mjf and sean spears um gambling as always um chatting um, saying about how great each other is and just like typical kind of funny um, heel kind of shtick. But then Shivani tells him that he's back in action um, next week, um, but he's also signed to face Jungle Boy um, at Double or Nothing, <laughs> to which MJF is absolutely fuming about it. He's like, I didn't sign this. Um, <laughs> so I thought it was, that was pretty funny. Um, it could be an interesting and, one there. I don't recall yeah, seeing them go up against each other before. No, me neither. So yeah. it's something I'd be interested to see. Um, Definitely. So I look forward to that. Um, next, we got a match between Moxley and Frankie Kazarian, um, and it was fine. Uh, you know, Mox got the win as expected. I don't think anyone expected him to lose, but um, the kind of the the good bit about all this was what happened after the match, where he was attacked by Dark Order. Um, you know, SEU try and come down and make the save, um, but they get overpowered as well. Um, then out comes Brody Lee, um, and close lines Moxley. Um, he basically says he's, you know, he's here to answer, answer the bounty that Moxie put on his own head the previous week and challenges him at double or nothing. And then, you know, they're trying to make Moxie some sort of badass, like Austin-y type character, aren't they? So he gets on the mic and was like, all you had to do was ask. And then Lee, uh, you know, kicks him and they beat him down again. But I don't know. I feel at every time I bring up Moxley, I feel like I'm just being unnecessarily down on the guy. But <laughs> meh, <laughs> like, I don't I know. The problem I've got, and I've probably not got as much of a problem with Moxley as you, but I understand where you come from. The problem I've got is I uh, I don't want AEW to get too much criticism. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't do the match for this reason, but the fact that Double or Nothing is going to be two disgruntled ex-WWE people <laughs> fighting for their top title is going to open them up to people going, uh, I see they're having to rely on that. you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's a shame. Because straight away they've they've tainted the main event by having it being two big ex WWE people, um, mm. and I don't know. Like I, I still, I, I'm totally with you on. I, I don't mind Moxley, but I, I'm I'm with you on the championship thing. I, it, I, I don't. It was a really good run for Jericho with the title, so maybe that's what sort of tainted it a little bit because his run with the title has not been as engaging. But um, yeah, I, I I can't say as I'm overly like yeah. Let's see this match you know it'd be okay yeah yeah i think i don't know i just i'm not i'm not really sold on moxley's gimmick i think is is my main problem because yeah. i don't think he knows who he is let alone you know how we meant to know who he is one minute he's like 
doing saying stupid shit like oh you need to phone your grandma and you know all, all you had to do was ask and then the next minute we're meant to believe you're some sort of psychopath and I don't know it just doesn't really fly with me I don't think he's I don't think he's as good on the mic as people thought he was um I feel like that's kind of shown a little bit and then in the ring he's always been fine you know he's he's a solid performer but he's not outstanding do you know what I mean I think yeah. you know to your comments around them kind of relying on WWE guys I think you know previously it was Jericho and Cody so you know both of them are former WWE guys as well I don't feel like they're ever going to kind of escape that kind of shadow but for no, me as I say I don't think it's Jericho a reason to not have the match mm. it's just more like they have took criticism before and will definitely again now because of this but I'm not saying that yeah. that's why they shouldn't have the book and it's just uh, straight away that's going to happen and I don't think Brody Lee's a big enough name yet to go well we'll get away with it like Jericho and Cody you're always going to get away with because they're both fucking brilliant and I'm not mm. saying I'm not saying Brody Lee's not but he's not really done a lot yet he was never massive in WWE and he's not done a lot in AEW just yet so I don't know I think it's a bit premature for me yeah, it does. It does feel a bit, you know, a bit rushed almost. Like they've kind of run out of opponents now. Like I, d- I don't know whether you know they had something else planned and they can't actually follow through with this, so they've given you know Brody the shot or what. But like it felt weird when it was Moxley Hager. You know, it feels weird that Jericho still hasn't had a rematch, and now it's yeah. Brody. Uh, I don't know. But you know that that said, I, you know I am looking forward to seeing it. I think you know I think I feel like it could be a decent contest. Hopefully, there's no stupid stipulation where it's like a fucking hardcore or false cap. Just like just have a match, Moxley for fuck's sake. Yeah, just, yeah, just a normal match in the ring. Is, you know, I mean, but, what I will say is like the Hager match ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. I know yeah. there's criticism. I know you've had some criticism of that match as well, but it was better than I thought it was going to be. Not the best match in the world. So you never know. I, I'm, I'm kind of down on this main event as well, but maybe it's going to be better than I'm expecting it to be. Yeah, I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I suppose I'm happy that they've just they've moved on to his next opponent now. I feel like the Jake Hager thing was, you know, don't get me wrong, the, the video packages and stuff that they did leading up to it was fantastic and really got me hyped. But prior to those, I wasn't really, like, excited for it. And the match itself was was okay. You know, I, I think it did exceed my expectations as well, similar to what you said, but it was only okay. Whereas I feel like this time, the, you know, even even though saying that double or nothing isn't that far away, do you know what I mean? So hopefully the build is is good enough to kind of get us interested in it. But yeah, yeah. it needs to be seen. Um, the next, so they had a Brandy Rhodes promo. This was weird as well. Um, so kind of just felt a bit out of the blue. So apparently she's responding to Jake you know, from the comments he made fucking months ago, or however long it was, um, you know, going <laughs> on about uh, being fucking Caesar's Cleopatra or Samson's Delilah or whatever the other comparisons he made and stuff and saying, you know, it's not 1991, you know, if he slaps her in the face, she's going to slap him back. It's like, well, okay, why, what makes you think he's going to slap you in the face? But whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, she's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm not Delilah, I'm not Cleopatra, I'm not... Bill Clinton's moniker, you know, she's Brandy, she's the C, the CBO of AEW, and, you know, from now on, he'll keep her name out of his dirty old mouth. And, I mean, it was fine, but it just, I don't know, felt... I mean, obviously, we'll come on to it in a bit, but for the way the show was at this point in time, it felt really random, but mm. it might seem less random as we carry on with the results. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so following that, um, we had QT Marshall against Lance Archer. Um and as expected, with most of his matches, he makes a short work of QT. Um, but then at ringside, obviously, because he's part of the, the Nightmare Collective or whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck they are, what are they called? The Nightmare Family? What are I they? think the Nightmare Family now, the Collective, was that thing Brandy was doing, which was cutting people's hair. Uh, and um, it turns out she was just an aggressive hairdresser. But um, <laughs> yeah, they, they've, they've dropped the Collective. So he's part of the Nightmare Family. Right, it's okay. Um, well, yeah, if, so. by the way if you're interested or if anyone who's listening is interested um, it felt like they just dropped the Nightmare Collective but Brandy actually finishes the story on her Instagram so you can actually see why she's normal again now basically she went to therapy but um, I, I, I don't, I'm not even joking Like she, she hits her head which is what made her go weird and they even show you like uh, hitting her head in one of the AEW matches and then um, they've sort of storylined it out as to why she's not weird and not doing the Nightmare Collective anymore. Uh, obviously, in reality, it was because Awesome Kong kept getting injured, but there you go. <laughs> well, I did not know that, so I'm going to have to check that out because that sounds trippy as fuck. Um, 
But, yeah, so apparently QT Marshall is part of the fucking Nightmare family, because why not? Um, and then, as you know, anyone who's part of the Nightmare family has to be accompanied to the ring by fucking Brandy. Um, and naturally she has to match them so that she come dressed as a oh, fucking apple. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> it's a fucking Statue of Liberty, just like, mm. um, But yeah, so she was there at ringside, and then they, they kind of carried on, you know, off the back of last week with uh, Britt Baker and you know, a little bit of um, animosity between those two. They kind of carried on the feud a little bit. So Brandy ends up getting in her face um, and ends up throwing Britt Baker's shoe into the, um, well, I say into the audience, but into the empty fucking chairs. Um, and then towards like the end of the match, in fact, it might have even been after the match, um, Britt gets involved and DDTs um, Brandy at ringside then throws her into the ring. And then that's where Jake makes a reappearance. So with Snake... In uh, snake in tow, uh, so very reminiscent oh, nice, of the old yeah. school Jake. Um, get to the ring great. and get the snake out. Classic Jake. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Jake, dirty old man Jake. Um, but yeah, so he, he so he's basically going. It is nineteen ninety one for fuck's sake. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, but no, so he comes with his uh, snake. I'm pretty sure it's not Damien who was the original snake because he's probably dead now. But um, he for, brings... fair play for fucking knowledge there, Carl. I would never have been able to name that snake. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, he, he brings him out um, and like lets him slither on Brandy um, because, you know, it's a creepy thing to do. Um, nah, but yeah, I don't know. It, it felt felt a little bit tame, to be fair, because, I don't know, it felt like the snake just didn't really want to be there and kept like trying to <laughs> crawl off. And he's like, no, no, you will just slide on the face. And the snake's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Leave me alone, dude. <laughs> dude, it's 2020. <laughs> we don't <laughs> do that sort of thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to shit on it though because it was, uh, you know, it was old school Jake for me, and you know, even though the fact Actually, that yeah. it didn't, I don't know, it didn't come off super well, I still appreciated the the effort, shall we say? Um, well, I'll so. moan about it this a little bit more on the ringside report because of some of the backlash it got, but um, I'm with you. I didn't mind it. Yeah, classic retro. Classic retro Jake. Um, and then after that, Darby Allen gets interviewed by Taz, um, and then Taz is like, you know it's tough you know you pretty much pinned yourself last week you know and he's made a few mistakes now so you know if he wants you know Taz can help him and Tarby just looks at him and goes fuck you old man just walks off uh, <laughs> so yeah interesting I uh, don't know what, yeah. I don't know whether that's going to go anywhere it doesn't seem like it would um, uh, it wouldn't but... surprise me if Taz ends up in the ring again you know <laughs> oh God, I'll teach that fuck. kid a lesson <laughs> well I mean in not necessarily in a good way I was getting a MVP vibes like old man Taz was like oh I'll, I'll give you some advice and I was like oh god so yeah don't know a bit weird that one for me um, however we go on to the main event where you know it was Les Sex Gods uh, Chris Jericho and uh, Sammy Guevara taking on uh, Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy and, and how fucking crazy was this fucking trippy as fuck on it so <laughs> I don't know. It was just it was just a really good match. About uh, about halfway through, uh, Matt Hardy, you know, gets changed and turns back into old Matt Hardy, like Hardy Boys Hardy. So I think this is an interesting gimmick. It happens again. I, um, I, I, we've talked on it in previous weeks, but I'm enjoying Matt more because of the mm. duality of his character, and it's largely down to the fact that I didn't get broken Matt. Mm. But I don't know, having this sort of like dual personality thing is working a bit better for me I don't, I, I, I'm enjoying it more because it it, there's something more I can get from it you know what I mean yeah do you know what I don't even know whether he's two characters or three at this point because he came out like he looked a bit like Broken Matt but not like I don't know not fully and then halfway through the match he disappears and he comes back as like Matt Hardy and then at one point in the match they shove him into a fucking ice box and then he comes out the ice box and he's like Damascus like proper fucking speaking in stupid fucking riddles and rhyme, like broken, broken Mahardi. So is the three levels of it or is it, you know, was he originally meant to be Damascus? But is, I he, don't really know. is he Matt, woken and broken? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, so very interesting, I think, from a gimmick standpoint to the fact that he is being multiple versions of Mahardi, which uh, I, I don't know, I think it's pretty pretty cool to be fair. Um, well, I know you know touched that. on before that you wanted to see the uh, the Lake of Reincarnation thing oh, on yes. Jericho and um, it would play really well now because they're both kind of, they'd both be doing that in a sense, you know, so mm. uh, yeah, 
but I, I enjoy Matt a bit more now. We've got this this sort of dual sort of, or like you say, potentially three different characters because I just it, broken Matt as a as a solo piece just goes right over my head. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a bit more might any. I think you can either love him or hate him, and I think the broken Matt stuff. Some of it can be really good, and some of it can just be a bit like silly. Like you know, I know some people were proper like bombing off the whole fucking the whole the whole of us or whatever the fuck he called him. Yeah. Um, couple of weeks ago whereas I just thought, all right, that's just stupid, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like uh, look, you called him asshole in a weird way. Like, yeah, like okay. okay. Yeah. But I really don't get why people were bumming off that, but I think um, we might just be confused old men, Carl. They can't rule that out, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean saying that, like some of the stuff he does, like, you know, some of the things where he speaks in like rhyme and riddle and stuff like that is, is fine. But I don't know, some of it feels a bit off. But mm. all that all that aside, the match itself was just fucking mental. So, you know, they start a fight and it, it it was a street fight, but they're fighting ringside and then they make their way into like the the back area. I mentioned, you know, Mahardi gets put into an ice box at one point and, you know, they're the they're fighting all around the back area. Um and then <laughs> then they fucking get in a golf cart. Um, Omega and Hardy and start chasing down um, Jericho they manage to clip Jericho and knock him and then they fucking turn it round and they chase down Sammy and they fucking run him over (laughs) (laughs) and the guy bounces like a motherfucker off the fucking front of the golf cart like that's a serious hit to be fair like fair play to him (laughs) like holy shit Um, so yeah so that was just mental um then you've got fucking Kenny Omega doing a moonsault off a fucking crane, um, you know, and then in a circle get involved um, as they do and, and get the numbers advantage and end up putting Mahari through a table. Um, Jericho power bombs Omega on top of uh, the golf cart that they've been chasing each other around in. Um, and then obviously in a circle go on to kind of pick up the win. But um, just the ending to this is maybe like chuckles so much, but because they're like it was a live show and, and they're doing it in the stadium somewhere in Florida or somewhere, I think it is. I'm not sure. Um, um, yeah, I think it is Florida as well. Yeah. But uh, like they're, they're in like a baseball stadium basically, and because they've gone around everywhere, you can kind of see the field and on the. Uh, on the scoreboard in the back, you can just see the inner circle graphic as they, you know, flip off the camera as they as they fades black, and it's just it's the most inner circle thing ever, isn't it? Like, oh yeah, it's one of those. I feel like I mean, I definitely missed the bubbly bunch this week, but at the same time, like the match itself was just full of just chaos, like hilarity and everything else in between. So, um, yeah, just thought it was really really funny. No, I'm totally with you on that, and um, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed the bubbly bunch. So uh, it is a shame, but at the same time, we're getting back to slightly back to the way things are meant to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, they're back together. We're getting the live events going again. You know, fair enough. But um, hopefully, there's still room for for that sort of thing. And don't be wrong, this this main event was creative as fuck. You know, there, there was all sorts going on in a very fun way. Um, you know, I can't really piss and moan about WWE with shenanigans, but this is how you do shenanigans, isn't it? Oh god, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, for me it was uh, it was another fun episode of Dynamite. Um, again, similar to Raw this week. So I thought Raw was really good. I thought AW was was nowhere. So I ended up having to give it a, a three out of five. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm fairly with you on that. I'd give it a three out of five as well. It was uh, it was good. Um, I, I hold AW up against its own shows. Sadly, you know what I mean. It's mm. it's been. It's probably the only three I'm going to give, I'll put it that way. So it's still been the best <laughs> show for me this week. But um, even so, I feel sometimes a bit unfair and I go, ah, there's a three. But that being said, that cage match, uh, Dynamite, I only give a four. So, you know, yeah. I can't, <laughs> this is definitely a three for me. Uh, <laughs> I, was, it, I can't so, wait to see the card that uh, brings a five out of you. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> 